Welcome back, everyone, to Kaiser Reich. I'm your host, Mr. Deval Lover. Or, I guess maybe at this point, uh, National Revolution or Government Lover, but we got to talk about the death of Liao Zongkai. Tragedy struck the Kuomintang last week as one of its pivotal figures is laid to rest. Liao Zongkai was a founding member of the KMT and was at least titularly the second highest ranking member of the party state. Widely respected among the left, he has continued to nurse their lasting wounds from a brutal assassination attempt in 1925. It seems that he has finally succumbed to those wounds, though thankfully lived long enough to see the party return from its exile. As his funeral concludes near Nanjing, his personal effects are not the only things that are being divided, following a tradition set by Dr. Sun himself. Uh, his wife, he, uh, Zhang Ning, herself a prominent revolutionary, has taken a central committee executive seat. Executive committee seat. The position of vice chairman of the CEC, a position specifically created for him during the exile period, has gone to Song Qingling, helping preserve the balance of power within the party. Remaining in contention, however, is the title of the premier of the executive of Yunnan. The nominal head of the executive branch, it was freshly created during the League War as a replacement for the old Bai Yang Prime Minister Liao. Oh, Liao hardly had any time to utilize it, however, leaving executive power effectively in the hands of the nominally weak presidency. To Wang, the job was meant as a means personally recognizing Liao's contributions. Whose rivals in the PAC represented a necessary counterweight to the chairman as Liao is seen as more conciliatory. Wang is determined to, have, having, to avoid having to split executive prerogatives, fearing the perils of a powerless president vulnerable to political machinations as president of the republic. It is in his right to appoint the premier, then Chen Gongbo is the most logical candidate. A loyal protege, friend, and leader of the RCA, his candidacy is troubled by his personal radicalism and the fact that Wang needs him elsewhere. The alternative is for Wang to abolish the premiership and incorporate into the presidency, it's ca certain to cause alarm. Whatever it decides, this choice will cast a long shadow, setting a precedent for the future of the presidential premier relationship in the Republic. Appoint Chen Gongbo to replace him. Get more radical socialism. And get more political power and research speed, it's not bad. Liao Zong Kai dies, huh? Follow the premiership back into the presidency. Get way more political power, but lose stability, and get better improved relations opinion. And get more command power. And increase radicalism by a small amount. Mission to Calcutta, across the continent, a liberation fever swept across India, and the people have risen up against the British oppressors. As well as it was the foundation of the Bharatiya Khami by the Indian National Congress and their various allies, a government that stands as a continued testament to the freedom's enduring call. Often working parallel to our own efforts across the 1920s, the Bharatiyas are often seen as kindred spirits to their own. In some ways, this exchange of ideas began as early as 1907, when exiled Chinese revolutionaries worked with Indians and Japanese revolutionaries to form the Asiatic Humanitarian Brotherhood. As we work to free our homeland, it's imperative that we remember that all others in East Asia need liberation. A direct example of such Pan-Asian partnership, independent of Japan's misguided sphere, was the Chinese military mission sent to India in 1934 under Zhang Fa There remains, of course, plenty of hurdles on the future ties, such as the question of borders and dealing with the Japanese threat, but for now we salute our revolutionary comrades as we march towards freedom, and let us hope they do the same. We express hope for a productive future. As you can see, Indonesia, Indochina, I should say, um, the Germans were very smart, and they navally invaded, and they cut off basically the main army from everyone else, but volunteers from the Rising Sun, look at this. The foreign minister received the official enlistment of a curious individual today, and a handful of volunteers from the Empire of Japan. Nosaka Sanzo, a former labor organizer, journalist, and member of the Third International, has long worked with the Mingguan insurgency since his deployment to China following the failed 1932 uprising. A committed Marxist devoted to the liberation and revolution of the Japanese workers and peasants, he has since been exiled from his home country and has acted as an agent of the Third International. Despite Japan's stanch relationship with China, especially in regards to the exploitation of a country's northeast, Nosaka and his followers have pledged their services to the Chinese National Revolution, arguing that the cause stands with ours in a joint Pan-Asian struggle against not only imperialism, but also capitalism as well. As a result, the National Revolutionary Army has decided to fully grant a commission to Nosaka as an officer of the National Revolution. We work together as one. Because why not? So we showed up, and we're like, oh my god, what are you doing here? How dumb are you? You have to defend your coasts. I think an enemy like the Germans will not take advantage of anything they can to make sure they win. Hello. And now get in there. Because you're probably going to die. My god. This is insane. Can you get to Saigon quickly? No, you cannot. As we establish a national bureaucracy, which is good. If you want to do this again, please go ahead. I would like to do 10 of the massive, but like I said, we're going to do Shanghai Connections next. Yeah, we definitely can't win here. So hold. As best you can. Electronic mechanical engineering. Very nice. Research speed, yes. The war after the party. Backlash against Wang Jingwei's tyranny has been swift and unexpectedly brutal. Factions from across the political spectrum have condemned Wang's move to absorb the premiership of the executive yuan. His blunt is highlighted by the fact that it's not only the PAC and RF that decry the move, many of the RCA's moderates have been enraged and driven closer to the PAC's camp. Even among the RCA's leadership, uh, oh, radicals, there's been some stir when Chen Gongbu rumored to be fuming at Wang's decision to pass him over for the job. 
Cox is within the cool month thing and not well defined, but with the state being officially one party and factionalism did your ban, but it certainly has not been good for Wayne's camp. With blood now in the water and the chairman appearing vulnerable for the first time, many have come to knock him out down a peg. Any attempt to force his resignation is unlikely to see to the juncture, but he's hurried to try and solve the situation by tentatively offering to appoint Gu Mengyu, most prominent RCA moderate leader, as his premier in exchange for political truce. Uh, the onus now uh, lies on the pack to make the move. Word of this offer is quickly leaked and spread, though for Song Qingling and her allies it might be not good enough. Having an RCA member in the position would likely be a victory for the chairman regardless, and with a statementship, it will likely reconcile the moderates soon enough, but openly holding out until a candidate from the quasi-illegal opposition camp may discuss the wavering RCA moderates, turning their anger towards PAC obstructionism and validating Wang's fears of partisan partisanship. The party's future hangs on the balance, confirming Gu's premier will soothe tempers. They're still not bad to get more political power. Double down against the corner chairman. So what happens if we do this one? That doesn't seem like a good idea, but we're going to try it anyways. We'll see. You can't win there. Okay. You're only 8 combos. I threw you these guys in just because they're not very good, but uh, they get, do get bonuses and buffs. So. Passage is 1936. Organic law. With the final last constitution far in the distance, envisioned only after unification, a working group has likely been tasked with the National Congress to draft an organic law to supplement the largely defunct 1912 Provisional Constitution. As modeled after Sun Yat-sen's writings, where he envisioned a government with five branches, with a weak president above them. The first three are the more traditional executive, legislative, and judicial yuans. They are joined by the examination yuan, dedicated to identifying and keeping records of qualified candidates for civil service positions both nationally and provincially, and in some ways a modernized imperial service exam. The second is a control yuan, which is given the power of audit, oversight, and impeachment. Given the circumstances, these two similar yuans are effectively sincures, sin men to respectfully shunt sideline elders, and competent recipients of patronage and overambitious upsets to a place that can do minimal damage. Accordingly, there were concerns of corruption and bureaucratization. However, Wang is elected to throw a bone at the Reconstruction faction, whether out of genuine idealism or simply to be contrarian. The RF is insistent that the new government be done correctly in their eyes and follow Sun's constitutional theory. While there is legislation now sure to be approved, the only remaining matter is how to distribute positions. With those of applicants already in front of them, the President and his closest advisors decide their nominations. Carefully bounce across all factions? Hmm. Based off loyalty to the Chairman. Medium amount. On the merits of each applicant. Oh. Influence of the CSP Orthodox faction will rise among cynical circles. I like the political power. Our efforts to integrate Hunan. In recent weeks, we have taken steps further to integrate the Hunanese administration with their own, making slow but steady progress in this regard, and this, of course, have not gone unnoticed by the Tang Shengzi and the Buddhization Society, but it appears that they have generally acquiesced to our demands, whether out of genuine ideological loyalty or because they see unification as a fait accompli. To prepare such matters, let us proclaim to the government that they must henceforth use our dialect in all forms of public communication. Not only will this help tear down provincial dialect barriers, but also must prevent means of local dissent. In any case, our control over Hunan has greatly increased from before, one step further in the road to unification. Fantastic. All we have to do is be friends with them. Okay, so what can we do here? We'll strengthen the PIC. We'll strengthen the PIC. Increase the influence of the RCA. Strengthen the CRS. Oh, look at that. The KMT, CRS. The Young Guard. More political power. I like that. Better land doctrine costume, though. Can't even use that. Okay. Strengthen the RCA. As you can tell, I want to go to us. I've not gone to us in a long time, as far as I can tell. LCS. Uh, we have so many options as the left KMT. It's a lot. I kind of want to play this again probably sometime. You get weekly stability, but you lose political power. So we kind of have to go with uh, this guy. You get slightly more political power. It's not bad. And I can connection to then this one too. More stability, political power, and more war support. Because I want that uh, research slot. As part of the Kuomintang's commitment to the mass movement, the parties to be the vanguard to represent the oppressed workers and peasants of China from the chains of the local bullies, the corrupt bourgeois gentry, and the imperialists. If we are to succeed in bringing the revolution to China, we must then teach the true people of China to rise up and realize their revolutionary potential. It goes different effects. We don't have them. Then we don't have them. Oh no. What will we do about that? Oh god, we're going to get cut off here, aren't we? God dang it. Well... Goodbye. <laughs> the Judicial Yuan. The Judicial Yuan is a branch of government that oversees the Supreme Court, the Supreme Administrative Court, and the Disciplinary Court, and also the Ministry of Justice and Administration. Given the numerous constitutional ambiguities during the political tutelage period, with a decades-old provisional constitution that has yet to be formally replaced, there is some interest by the Kuomintang's competing factions to have a sympathetic figure at its helm. Although in practice, Central, Committee, exe Central Executive Committee has a final say in constitutional affairs, the candidates will likely set the tone for the Yuan as, as a whole in its formative years. Now look at this. We can... 
Huh. Well, I mean, increased collaboration. I might as well do that again, right? Well, given the RCI's dominance of the government thus far, it's widely expected that Wang will appoint someone from outside his clique. The two leading candidates are Guo Guangxi and Wu Chaoshu. Uh, Guo Guangxi is a French-educated professor of law who taught at Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou, while qualified. He's also a high-ranking member of the PAC, a faction Wang would like to keep contained. Wu Chaoshu was the first Chinese lawyer in Hong Kong, educated in the UK, and the chairman of the Judicial Committee in the 1925 Guangzhou government. His outspoken affiliation with the RF has made him an object of mistrust, however, among social circles. Of course, there's always a third option. Both men are long-term, or long-time Kuomintang members, but perhaps some fresh blood is needed. Liang Gu Zhengding is a scion from the RC educated at the Sun Yat-sen University in Paris. It certainly would not be a good look for the chairman, but he survived worse. Guo Guangji is an exper experienced legal expert. Radicals will decrease. Wu Chaoshu is a, as a compromise candidate. Gu Wang Ding will shake things up a bit. Need him out. 26% nice. Secure national trade. Utilize underground networks. Yeah, I heard this one last time. So we read this one. Please go ahead. We're going to lose political power, but uh, maybe another military factory to use. There you go. Oh, look at this. Yes. Chinese weapon weaponry designer? Oh, yeah. So, you guys are killing each other here, huh? We don't like you. And yeah, we, we like you slightly more. Uh, Li Zongren, huh? Return of the KMT. That's going to be the right at KMT, then. What are you guys? Lingguang Clique. Can we unify with the other KMT? It honestly really doesn't matter. Are you are you at war with each other? Yeah, you are. Um, can we see volunteers? One. Well, there's cells and mountains and like and the like, all that. Uh, for that, fine. You go here. We'll send the horses. We'll see what happens. Out of the shadows, when it comes to the business of revolution, it's only natural that a radical energy emerge, particularly among the youthful and the disaffected groups of that old order. That said, the KMT, despite the revolutionary heritage, often keeps keen on preserving an orderly, uh, <clears throat> authoritative atmosphere fitting of a vanguardist party. They've also been known for their pragmatism, willing to accommodate aligned groups as needed to advance their goals. Stretching this, however, as the entry of new groups into the national intellectual dialogue, the China Revival Society and the Chinese Syndicalist Party's radical faction have both ridden the coattails of the successes of the more mainstream socialist groups. However, as nationalistic, iconoclastic uh, sentiment rises, they found a greater following, emboldening them to create newspapers and publications of their own. Affiliated with the CRS is, is the Tian Chu uh, paper. Meanwhile, many CSP radicals have been subscribing to Q Q Bai's Hot Blood Daily, so named for the belief that the hot blood of the press will overcome the cold iron of the strong in Dongfang Zasi, Eastern Miscellany, which frequently runs articles dealing with the tensions between Marxism and Utopian Socialism. The party was a fairly powerful secretary apparatus, or security apparatus, capable of censoring unwanted opinions as needed, especially those bucking the KMT orthodoxy that said, driving these groups underground can only slow them down if the underlying sources of radicalism are not addressed. Shut it down. Influence of the CSP Orthodox faction will rise among cynical circles. Influence of the world society will rise, as well as radicalism will decrease. Radicalism is rising within the KMT, repress, representing political polarization, social division, and military discontent. While some radicals will be expected in a revolutionary movement, it's wise to temp it down or at least keep it lower than the support of the RCA and PAC. Otherwise, some radicals may conclude that the President's Central Committee is rudderless. Perhaps they must be orthodox too. And it's revolutionary fervor. Yeah. Yeah. Limits of power. Ever since Dr. Sun declared himself Generalissimo and the KMT lurched towards a vanguardist direction, questions of constitutionalism, checks and balances, and power sharing have been a sore spot for the ostensibly Democratic Party. His often bickering successors have not helped their case, struggling to keep the party together even with such extra constitutional powers. Wang Jingwei is the latest to assert his unchecked authority for the duration of the political tutelage. As with the premiership's crisis having failed to quietly resolve within the halls of power, it has since reached the ears of the public. As the scandal continues to dog the party, supporters largely bottom out as the people return to their usual apathy. They came to a little better than squabbling buying politicians. Back in the CEC, the standoff between the RCA um, and the PAC oriented factions continue. Um, Sun Fo and the Reconstruction faction, whether because of political shrewdness or fears of instability, have been offered to break from the PAC led blockade. <clears throat> Sun Fo, already vice premier of the executive Wan, a position created for him, has generously offered to become a premier with Gu Meng Yu as his deputy. So hardly fix the underlying problems that the de dispute is uh, exposed, but with the PAC showing no indication of giving up, this will at least allow Wang to move on for now. Uh, discarding this chance to off ramp is not an ideal option either. Throughout this crisis, Wang has been forced to acknowledge the premiership is at least a distinct job, albeit with ambiguous powers, and given up directly from abolishing it. Chen Gong Bu, slighted but still loyal, has concocted a plan. With a reluctant ascent of the RCA moderates, tired of the unabating crisis, 
Wang Longpoint himself as Premier, holding the presidency and premiership simultaneously during the tutelage. The RCA will use every dirty trick in their arsenal to ram it through the provisional legislature, and Wang will use his powers as commander-in-chief to silence the Senate. Their bluff called, the PSC will be forced to hold full for the sake of the nation. He's going to try to mend the things now. Remove him. Get some fool. Hmm. Lose political power. Lose a bit to get more totalism. It's too late. The damage has been done. Okay, so where are we at right now? 30%. 35%. Nice. Oh, no. Wait, so that says 35%. Revolutionary radicalism. Huh. Promote revolutionary culture. Since the Xinhai Revolution of 1911, new thinkers and ideas have emerged into the Chinese political and literary scene as those in our country have sought to find connections with Chinese values and Western ideals. In order to strengthen the revolutionary cause, we will inspire the creation of such a revolutionary culture to support and direct the people's art to support the cause of our revolution. Oh, look at that. Nice. So, you... Come over here and do that. You... Split yourself in half. There you go. And you still have this guy. I'm just going to go over here. Follow Madrid, and we could get involved there too if we really wanted to, but we'll see. Failed revolt in Ukraine. Not good for them, but not our problem. <clears throat> what do you got here? Offensive? Nice. Good. Be offensive. Be very offensive. National School in Bolivia? Oh boy, not good. Oh, hello. Our efforts to integrate Hunan. Uh, once again, please go ahead. Cool. Because right now... Ah, look at that. 10% collaboration. They will receive the surrender level by 3 and give 10% compliance with enemy capitulates. Stack the bureaucracy. Undermine the chairman's grip. Uh, eyes in the dark. Huh. Is there another one we can do here? Not yet. I don't need a form. We can't do any of that stuff yet. God dang it. Liberation of trans women. Feminist struggle. Daily compliance is not bad, but we don't need that. Power to the Liberation Front. Intensify reconstruction efforts. It's not bad. Consumer goods. Create a railway from Nanjing to Nanjing. Hmm. Here should be warlord assets. The Ministry of Communication. Well, we open the Wampa Wampoa Military Academy in 1924. In accordance with the ideals of Sun Yat sen. The Wampoa Military Academy was created <clears throat> to house China's next generation of officers and generals to partake in the National Revolution. With the return of the Kuomintang in China once more, the Central Committee has unanimously agreed to authorize the reestablishment of the Military Academy in preparation for national unification. Good and smart to do. Probably be making better guns too, anyways. There you go. Yeah, everyone's erupting into civil war. Actually, learning something here? No, okay. You're out of energy. Wanna help defend here, maybe? Oh, what are we making? Ah, oh, support equipment. Oh, we're not using support equipment? Huh. Don't lose now. Nice. <clears throat> have to reduce their slot. Finally, thank God. Ugh. We can send more people elsewhere, but I don't really need to. Um, can we send them to Spain? Is Spain dead yet? CNT FII? FAI? Yeah, we can try to send them one, I guess. We are taking normal infantry, I guess. Led by the sky. Sun. Good luck. Um, they're not going to get involved down there. Bulgaria? No, we don't really care about Bulgaria. I mean, we don't have any horses to spare up there, so. Oh. Cool. 
spots to cultural institutions. It's not bad for equal stability, but I don't want to influence the whole world society. Increase education to none. Refuse to chance point one. God, this is taking forever to do this. Offer an alliance with Maklik. Notice this conflict has ended. Huh. Interesting. Hey, there you go. Good luck, guys. You're definitely going to need it over here. I feel like I just want you to hold. So, I don't really care what happens. Just don't die. Don't die and hold. As China is more important to me than anything else right now. I guess we get some of these guys too. Let's make the RF, LCS. Well, I guess maybe not. Pack, CRS. Hey, Mao Beng Chu. Yeah, we need some planes. We need some air support. We need some air experience. Yeah, of course. Interpreting the new culture movement. Uh, society of art, for art's sake, say the leftist writers who argue that the national revolution is the Chinese revolution, is not merely a revolution against imperialism or society, but rather a revolution of culture. In the early days, these so-called new writers have found themselves drawn to romanticism as opposed to naturalism, advocating art for art's sake, and emphasizing the individual following the tragedy of the Shanghai Massacre on the 8th, 30th, 30th of May. Leftist journalists, artists, writers began to gravitate towards the proletarian movement. Art was to be a tool in the natural dialectic, Marxist progression of the social revolution. Led uh, by artistic intellectuals such as Guo Maru, Cheng Fang Wu, and Yu Dafu have organized themselves in an artistic circle known as the Creation Society, with other prominent socialists to write on and, and critique Chinese society as well as to address the future proletarian revolution. They are also joined by groups such as the League of Left Wing Writers and the Legation Cities, with the Legation Cities being a prominent hotbed of left wing literary and cinematic activity due to perceived capitalistic oppression of foreign imperialism. Within the KMT, the more radical Marxists in the party, such as those among the RCA, have clamored for the observance of Karl Marx's birthday, May Day, as the anniversary of the Paris Commune, for the Provisional Action Committee, however. While the clique openly supports art, leftist art and culture, they have nonetheless shown opposition and fear of ideologues like Chen Gongbo, who advocate for the necessity of a cultural revolution. Citing that the social revolution and revolution against imperialism are more important in the here and now, they have denounced Chen's suggestions for a revolution against existing cultural institutions. A revolution against all cultures needed. Versus, the national revolution always comes first. Let's balance it out. We're going to go this way. Doing a good job here. Hey, you get almost one political power day. That's not, that's not bad. Ah, there goes the American Civil, Second Civil War. Well, can you go here? Maybe. Guang Chi. Again, hit pretty hard. Factions within the Academy. When the National Revolutionary Army collapsed during the concluding stages of the Northern Expedition, it was also had to bear the loss of the Academy's beloved instructor. Uh, the now controversial Chiang Kai-shek, as the NRA main's lord of the left wing of the party, fled for the Mengang Zone, when they nominated the capital general Li uh, Jinshi Zhishen to take on the role of Wampo as headmaster. As a titular the headmaster and the war minister of the Kuomintang, Li transformed and prepared the NRA for its liberation of China's east, however, his responsibilities have since grown tremendously and he indicated his desire to delegate responsibility for the restored academy to someone else. Meanwhile, the NRA swelling in rank, staff officers who served with distinction during the League War have been promoted to fill out Newly open positions, most notably Huang Jijiang, Zhang Fakui, and Xiao Jingguang. Despite the plethora of new openings, competition has nonetheless been fierce, especially within the growing academy in regard to Li's successor, members of the NRI's old guard, including long term guerrilla officers, have coalesced around the Wampo Military Academy Revolutionary Classmates Association. Their leader is Deng Yanda, Wampo's former head of the political department and co leader of the PAC. They are composed by the young guard of the army, consisting primarily of those trained abroad in the Wampo in exile. These European trained officers favor a modern approach to the NRA, seeking to transform it into a truly party subordinate armed forces while relying on Western style tactics and technologies. Led by the deputy and often acting headmaster of the Wampo during the exile period, Zhang Zizhong, uh, their supporters have, uh, <clears throat> have traded accusations of the Ogar for their outdated views and tolerance of suspected reactionaries in turn. The WMARCA officers often suspect the young guard of harboring ultra radicals uh, within the ranks, put potentially nefarious ideas for the future. Hmm, interesting. So. You have the old guard, and they made up the uh, the WM Arca. So the younger people have been suspected of harboring ultra radicals in the ranks. So we should probably look to the west. So this is like the old guard, like I see the Mengan insurgency. Even though I personally prefer the Army of the Revolution, because it sounds cool. I think the modern NRA. This seems really cool. It sounds cool, and it helps our regular infantry. Um, Masters of the Land sounds cool. 
Revolutionary Arms. That seems okay. It doesn't seem great. Mechanized units, and we're not going to get that many... It doesn't feel like we're going to get that many benefits, but we're probably going to go to look to the West, then. Look to the West. In the same way the Kuomintang thing is bringing progress to the nation, the National Revolutionary Army wants to be a vanguard for Chinese military development. Many officers have studied extensively in, mo in uh, modern European military academies across the last decade and are ready to apply uh, those lessons to build a new National Revolutionary Army with the latest induction and technology. Yeah, why not? Radical Socialism? Trying for the Young Guard. And then we're going to restore the political department, probably. The secret ingredient to the National Revolutionary Army total dedication to the Kuomintang causes is their thorough political education conducted by party representatives in the political department. This created an ideological backbone in each Wampoa cadet that allowed the NRA to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with much larger warlord armies. Only German intervention could save them. It's high time we revive this department and the 10th Congress and the 10th International. Oh, so we're making a lot of these divisions because even though they're crap, we can convert them later on, and, but we need like divisions to help like guard every province that we have. Our British comrades have confirmed their readiness to host the 10th Congress, or 10th International Congress, um, and Lenin's time for the left KMT to confirm his participation. We shall attend. A vibrant leftist culture. As a poor peasant comes to symbolize within the revolutionary left the nature of the oppressed Chinese countrymen, leftist artists have turned to create works of revolutionary art to portray their struggles, poverty, and potential for greatness, of course. Oh god. They cut us off here. That's not good. Prevailing within the artistic community is a group of woodcarvers encouraged by the esteemed leftist writer uh, Lu, Zhu. Lu Jun publicly endorses woodcarving as he felt the brush swabs of traditional Chinese painting and eloquence of Western oil painting did not care too much about the social reality. Meanwhile, woodcarving is close to life and readily accepted by the masses. Moreover, this is also simply for the reason that woodcarving is easy to do. In 1931, an art exhibition was held in Shanghai which displayed some woodcarving uh, works by young left-wing artists. Since the KMT's explosive victory in the League War, woodcarvers have turned to portray the struggle of the peasants as their main foci. Uh, this is seen as a tie to other work, which mainly deal with floods and famines. For example, the artist Duan Gongqing has produced two works, A Life After a Great Disaster, Where Is Our Home, and Famine. Meanwhile, writing on the poor Sichuan harvest, works have been created in response to the depravity of famine conditions, the symphony of hunger, collapse on the road because of hunger, and the hungry throng. Cool. Since we have uh, army XP right now, actually we could use a puppet stuff, but we have enough manpower. Well, do we have enough manpower? Let's govern it. Interesting. Um, regardless, uh, we're going to keep losing army XP, so I'm also invested into these guys, maybe? Gary horses are fine. Uh, I'll make you thicker. Uh, let's go at least 18 combat with. It's fine. And then the infantry we actually want to use, committee zone. This is actually pretty good. Uh, we could use support artillery, and we could use, honestly, cavalry or engineers. You know, we're going to dig in. You're going to be very good. Count with this fine. A look at Wang Jingwei's camp. While denounced as an autocratic clique, the chairman of the KMT Wang Jingwei's camp boasts one of the largest factions within the party. Those that make up support base within the government include both the residents' faction and the reorganized comrades' association. As such, as clique features its own internal power struggles, the various factions vie for Wang's favor and approval. The residents' faction, derisively called the palace faction by Wang's critics, are those who reside within with the chairman in the mansion. The vo main voice of the residents' faction is none other than Wang's wife, the ambitious and strong willed Chen Bi Jun was nicknamed by those within the RCA's Wang Furin, Madame Wang, or Lao o Tai Pao, the old woman due to her older, looking older than her husband, oh boy, a loving couple. Um, she as often has her husband's here and protects his interests even when he's unwilling to do so himself. Additionally, uh, members of this faction include Chu Min Yi, um, Zheng Zhong Ming, Zheng Jing, Wang Zheng Wu, and Chao Yao, Yao Zhu. They're also joined by Wang Qi and Wang Zhong Zhong, and Chun Chen Chun Po, bitterly opposed of the opposing the chairman's wife, none other than the chairman's beloved friend Chen Gongbo, who is a de facto voice of the RCA. Wang's political followers in the KMT, nonetheless, Chen and his followers form the radical wing of the RCA. His pro-authoritarian materialist stances are joined in conjunction with his belief that class war is inevitable in China. He is joined by followers such as Shi Kontong, uh, Wang Fakin, Liu Kanyuan, Gu Zhenggang, and the Gu Zhengding. Those who refuse to adopt Chen's Marxist-oriented worldview and are generally more moderate in the discourse are the RCA moderates led by Gu Mengyu. While a significantly smaller faction, Gu nonetheless holds influence as being Wang's most favorite writers, and the moderates themselves agree that a reorganization of the KMT is needed to purify the revolution. Joining Gu in the moderate camp are Pan uh, Yun Chao, Wang Leiping, Lin Bo Sheng, and Zhu Jiping. Zhi King. Favor the RCA radicals. Favor the RCA moderates. Favor the residents faction. Radicals will decrease, so we can't do that one. Influence of the radical faction will rise. Okay, we're okay with that one. Probably. Efforts to integrate Hunan. There you go again. Fantastic. So where are they now? 
because we have military affairs commission, which hurts us pretty badly. Um, the legitimacy of the party is growing, which is good. And the National Revolutionary Army is okay. Not great, but okay. And actually, we get more training time, which is not good. Recovery from the League War. Ugh. And Warlord Era inadequacies. Jesus Christ. Max entrenchment. Oh, Jesus. Well, we're at 4%. And Hawaii joins the Rex Pact. Of all the places you could join. Ah, oh, the 1937 Workers' Olympia. Today, the 1937 International Workers' Olympia has been opened in Birmingham. The ceremony was attended by dignitaries and athletes from the entire socialist world. After a parade through the host city, a mass gymnastics event followed, uh, that ended up drawing a crowd of tens of thousands of people over the next few days. Uh, athletes from both local and abroad will participate in the countless events, such as athletics, cycling, and football, uh, organized by the Socialist Workers Sport International. Um, the IWO is conceived as the antithesis of the bourgeois Olympic Games, where there are a showcase of elite competition. Our games are based on mass participation and friendship between our peoples, because friendship is magic. That difference in conception has sure shown its effect in intense numbers. What a glorious day for the working man. Friendship is magic. Just always remember that. Always remember that. Jan has been fully unified under one banner. The young colleague loses recently promoted. Oh. When removed, the, their states are now our, our cores. One, two, three, four. Holy crap, can we just straight up ask him? China's been fully united on one better, so we got to take a while for that one, I guess, huh? Hey, better guns. I like that. We need trucks, too. Top attack and reliability? Not bad. Actually, you use better guns now. Thank you. Can you actually win here? Maybe with our sport, yeah. We're getting penalized here at all, like getting attacked at all? No, okay. Look to the west, and then yeah, we'll probably want to restore the political department next. Oh no, we should probably encourage political commissioners. Inauguration. With all the delegates of the line, the tenth Congress of the Internationals begun the speech by Comrade Eric Blair. In so-called shield and sword speech, he underlined the need for the internationality or double its efforts towards forging the Damocles, a weapon capable of destroying the reactionaries across the world once for all. Bravo, Comrade Blair. And what is the purpose of national revolution to the unenlightened masses of the country? Questions like this pervade their every thought, impeding, impeding their will and desire to fight. In accordance uh, with the party's duties and ideals, let us encourage divisions and battalions to raise units of commiss commissars to remind our soldiers of their duty. Day three, having the way speech, if you want this one, please go ahead. Get more war support, gain a gendarmerie, template with four militias and one military police support group. That's actually not bad. Political commissars lose political power for a year. We have a better reinforce rate, stoke military fanaticism, which is what we want, though. Yeah, I read that one last time. So if you read this one, please go ahead. The liberal outpost, despite being largely sidelined for major policy-making decisions by the Kuomintang's leadership, leftist leadership, due to his right-leaning beliefs, that has not stopped the son foe from being busy in his long, lifelong goal of promoting his father's teachings, although the lens of his own interpretation of his father's will, in some ways. Carrying on the burden of preserving and disseminating his father's work as a means, for which the younger son connects with his distant parents beyond the grave. Aside from his, his activities in the government, uh, legislature and party politics, Sun Fo has always been a noted sponsor of the culture. Lieutenant Zhang Zhang and Huang Shenzi have formed the Chinese Cultural Association, which publishes the magazine Creation. The most recent endeavor, however, far outstrips a petty magazine in ambition. The Sun Yat-sen Institute for Advancement of Culture and Education aims to study Dr. Sun's ideas in relationship to general Chinese culture. Although it has received praise, it will be muted from party leaders. Its actual agenda rallying liberal scholars and thinkers has together cast suspicion about Sun's ambitions. This express in private his desire to attract the youth away from what he sees as Marxist influence back towards the three principles. The Institute has announced plans to release an English language journal called the Xiangxia Monthly, no doubt to sway foreign opinion and a domestic oriented compilation of current events. Containing its influence, however, in the end must simply just be a matter of ignoring it. Although Sun insists that the Institute be funded through private donations as a means of maintaining a reputation for impartiality and independence from the government, in practice he has leveraged this way over the executive wall and municipal governments for donations. This money has allowed the Institute to escape the contributions of famous scholars and quietly turning the faucet off would choke their activities. The young man honoring his father should be done on his own time. Radicalism will increase by a small amount with them both. I'm, I'm going to take the political power. Screw that. We'll take whatever advantage we can freaking get here, man. So, I'm going to empower anybody here. Strengthen RF, PAC, RCA, RF, PAC. So we don't want any of these guys in. And we don't want either one of these two either. Oh. What did we get here? Reduce radicalism. We want this guy still to look to the west. Yeah. I'll get that soon too. Which would be nice. Press it on the Danube. Hungary's exploded. Nice. 
to a final act of the 10th International Congress. With all important decisions being made during the first week, hey, at least we get army speed now, thank God, um, the Congress has moved on to less pressing matters. After 10 days of negotiations, discussion, and politicking, the delegates came with one final act, a declaration of eternal brotherhood and readiness to face imperialists wherever they are to be found. The workers of the world unite. Hey, more political power. Triumph of the Young Guard, after much debate within the upper echelons of the National Revolutionary Army, the NRA, elected to follow the leadership of the Zhang Zizhong as a new headmaster of the Wampua Military Academy. As such, the NRA would pursue Zhang and the Young Guard's proposal for the NRA to be extensively modeled on the armies of the West, with an emphasis on speed, force, and concentra concentration, and a highly centralized military command structure. Several leading officers from Europe have been promoted as well, including Ni Zhang Rongzhen and Du Yuming. The latter of whom is actually a member of the Deng Yandas, a WMIRCA, but nonetheless has pledged to work with the new headmaster due to his own interest in armor technology. Recent events. Our appointments have also curiously seen a number of China Revival Society CRS members, promoted including He Zongyang, Zhang Han, and Deng Wengyi. While appearing as army reformers and moderate, modernists, there are rumors that they hold much more radical plans in the direction of the NRA. In addition, there's also been a curious interest in the growing relevance of the China Revival Society and the European returnees. For some of the Mingang Zone, the leadership of the past decade was decentralized, to say the least, and some Mingang members prefer the nostalgia of a different era, when the academy was led by an enduring headmaster whose absolute word was authority. As a result, of some of, the more of those who were in the NRA during the insurgency had nonetheless begun to act to pivot ideologically towards the growing influence of the so-called Young Guard. So the Young Guard brings new energy to Wampoa, with a new headmaster proclaiming that this will be the necessary of a new modern Chinese revolutionary army. Nonetheless, there has been notice that there's more radical ideas being published or spread routinely, ideas linking the revolution of maximalism, Simon Kov, and Sorrell. Only time will tell whether this, not, this threat of radicalism is really real. Of course not. It's, it's not real. We need fresh ideas to win. R increase radicalism by a small amount. Lin Biao joins us. Their ideas are awfully drastic. Oh crap, we lose all that political power now. God dang it. Well, whatever. Dare to die, core. Heroic martyrdom. More attack over here. Assault battalions, huh? Renovate the Jing arsenal. Ooh, we can use more military factories immediately, right? Because we have enough guns. No, we don't have enough guns for now. There you go. And we need more RD as well. Uh, inherit our comrades' arms. It's not bad. Renovate these guys. Encourage widespread uh, radio use. So create the supply core. Mechanized units. Force concentration. To add an army centralization. Deference. That's not bad. So European air tactics, the modern NRA, that's pretty good to get, but we still got to work on these guys too. But we can do this one too, power of the United Front. <clears throat> As part of our promise of the Third International Alpha for exchange for arms, supplies, and recognition from the socialist nations of the West, we're going to undertake the Chinese National Revolution with the aid of the League of Chinese Syndicalists. Together, we let us work together in a new United Front to free our nation from imperialism, once and for all. Yeah, why not? The Rising Sun, oh god. Not ideal. How are we doing down here? Oh, do we. What the heck is going on? Wait, why, is there a, why are they split? That seems like a bad idea of how these, these guys split here. Maybe the river is too hard for us to pass through, maybe? Censorship in the odds. As the revolution continues, the grinding gears of state machinery often take an oppressive form. Long accustomed to evading reactionary censorship, the show. Shoo! No. On the other foot, the KMT is not hesitant to, or hesitated to suppress media unfavorable to the cause. A myriad of restrictions have slowly been put into place, either officially or unofficially, and censors deployed into relevant telegraph stations. With many rural citizens illiterate, KMT control of information can be concentrated in the cities. The Central Committee, uh, S Central Executive Committee, I should say, has passed the revised standards for news censorship, giving considerable authority to the Central News Agency in setting guidelines for all newspapers. Censors often have wide latitude in interpreting restrictions, causing a race for publishers to find ways around them. What's perhaps interesting, too, is that such aggressive government actions against counter-revolutionary works seem to have rubbed off on the students, who also regularly target critical press on their own initiative. Good for them. In the world of culture, there have been plenty of artists, all of all types, sympathetic to the revolution. Many have been chafed under the restrictions and complained the KMT are a little better than the predecessors, indeed. Many publishing companies have begun to self-censor out of fear of offending government sensibility. Although at this point, most have given up on halting the government from suppressing uh, public criticism. Prominent intellectuals have made the case that the arts require at least some creative freedom, particularly those aligned with the revolutionary values. A little leeway in the expression for us, and expression is key for art. Revolution is no excuse for, uh, no excuse for obscenity. Oh, you guys underground networks? I think so. Actually, where are we at for this? 51%. Revolutionary radicalism is here. The polarization of the NRA. The National Revolutionary Army was created to be the military army of the KMT, directly loyal to the party in the revolution and thereby freeing the KMT from being beholden to regional warlords under the leadership of the Minister of War, Li uh, Zhishen. 
Uh, the NRA's highest command has worked towards a relative political neutrality, refraining from interference in the civilian affairs or taking the sides of the political party debates the best they can. The status quo, however, has become increasingly under strain. Li Jishen has privately support, reported to Chairman Wang that more and more officers are joining the radical groups within the military. Worryingly, the main benefactors are not the usual suspects in Deng Yanda and his, po- and his uh, WM Arkham. Um, although Deng is too proud to admit it in public, he has privately confessed to his close allies that his fears that the organization is losing respect for the younger officers and freshly uh, uh, graduated cadets. The primary benefactor of the shift appears to be the China Revival Society, a group of uh, totalitarian nationalists led by General Hu Zongnan and other disaffected officers. Also distrusting the military, the old guard, are many radicals in the CSP who begin to organize militias independently of the NRA, increasingly disobeying the directives of the CSP's orthodox faction and international advisors. Their decision to organize wildcat, wildcat strikes and the CRS-led attempt to break them up have worsened the atmosphere in major Kuomintang strongholds. The workers radicalize. Oh. Radicalism will increase by a small amount. The soldiers radicalize. Lose 10% stability, that's a big hit. Get a little bit of stability, oh, more war sport though. We're only 54%. Stake, silk military fanaticism. I'm kind of okay with that. Gotta wait, working on army reform too, but still. Become an organizer, infantry leader, cavalry leader, ranger. Why not? If this KMT dies, then we can have the excuse that uh, they have been uh, killing our soldiers and uh, we need to rescue the revolution from them. So then there, what do you learn in here? Anything? No, okay, you learn nothing. Hey, Mexico joined us, nice. So the theory we give him a bit of power because of that, that's alright. Uh, industry reconstruction efforts. That'd be good to do too. As one of China's main, uh, most developed regions, the former League of Eight Provinces still lies ravaged by the recent liberation of the National Revolutionary Army. If we continue the revolution and earn the support of the masses, then we must seek to rapidly intensify reconstruction efforts of eastern China in order to build a suitable base for the National Revolutionary Government, the Propaganda Department. At May of 24, the first cadets of Wampo received political training uh, from Wampo's newly established political department. Um, inspired by revolutionary trends worldwide, of course. Can you actually win here? No. Well, maybe. At the time, Liao Zongkai was appointed the official head of the department. Uh, at the same time, prominent party members such as Dai Jitao, Wang Jingwei, and Hu Han- Hanin were lectures on the political subject. This class was routinely given political talks as they were first organized into the model regiment, the precursors to the NRA's first army. With the reestablishment of Wampoa, the political department has been reestablished with General Zong- Zhu Enlai once more resuming his position as head of the political department. With the encouragement of some of the R- RCA and the LCS, Zhu has a position to encourage Wampoa students to read about socialism, it's the history of the French and British revolutions, and Marxism nonetheless. Other ideas are flourishing in lectures as well. General Deng Yandas, known to frequently encourage his soldiers to seek the peasants out in the countryside and live amongst them. Other classes play up the notion of carrying the late Dr. Sun's will with the promise that perhaps the KMT may be successful this time. This has also been lectured by more nationalistic and radical officers, who instead focus on revitalizing the revolution against China's true domestic and foreign enemies. Extol the defense of the peasants. Emphasize the socialist revolution. Stress the national cause. Note that we are not alone in this fight. Oh, we have a nationalist cause, you know, friends. Of course we do. Building slot, huh? Short peasant communes. Deal with the warlords. Warlordism is a blight on Chinese nation. It's an oppressive institution that threatens not only national unity, but prosperity. As a finer footing, we've driven out the local warlords from the league, and we must not forget the millions of others living in the boots of petty tyrants. It's too early to challenge rivals for national leadership, but in the meantime, we'll ask the militarists as opportunities arise. Maybe should uh, take that one first. And yes, we will eventually need some trucks. Actually, we use them now. Na- national Labor Union. Oh, look at this. Look at China's industrialization has been uneven and heavily concentrated among the coastal cities, but it's been a long-running process facilitated in part due to the external investment. The wealth generated, however, has been extremely unequal, with much of it flowing uh, um, out of the country and the rest lining the pockets of the calm Prador bourgeoisie, uh, corrupt magistrates, and warlord armies. Trickling, little trickled down into the urban poor, um, and plenty flocked to the socialist cause when they liberated the LAM, the KMT, have sponsored many unions and under the banner of their party-controlled National Labor Union. Federation, and helps them inspire the urban proletariat to their cause and un- under an unamendable leadership. This pliant relationship has been challenged, however, by the zeal in which many workers and organizers have been conducting themselves with. Like a tempest in the bottle, the KMT conquests have been met with the release of considerable pent-up frustration from the working class. 
uh, syndicalist groups uh, have jumped on the chance to uh, advance their founding cause with some reluctance at first, but soon with considerable, considerable vigor. The worker is a key pillar in the KMT a power base, and its central executive committee must certainly act quickly to mold the movement before the movement moment passes. Um, either they bind the workers closer to the party or work to redefine the relationship with their sister party. Keep a grip on the Chinese unionism. Appoint CSP intellectuals to the NLU leadership. Encourage radical worker action. Oh, we'll give that one. Why not? All, oh! All control... Oh, that's really cool. That's, they actually tell you this. All controlled core states of the Nanjing clique are now our cores. Fantastic. Hey, we actually have a freaking port too. Look at that. Do we actually have a ship at all? No, we don't. We have no, literally no, no navy. Not ideal. We only get 0.3 every day, which is not pretty good, but eyes in the dark. Oh, we need this one, too. Real strategy requires cunning, and for all the bright colored banners and flowery language of companies' liberation, in the shadows lies plenty of opportunities for skullduggery. If we're to stay one step ahead of the opponents, we need to coordinate our intelligence op efforts, and that means creating a formal espionage apparatus. Fittingly, there will be plenty of intrigue evolving and the deciding on the agency. With imperialists, counter-revolutionaries, and reactions all across us, the party will decide the direction of our internal security apparatus. Oh, this focus will allow us to choose between the three potential uh, intelligence agencies, which will be relevant to the ongoing balance of power. Nice. But I want this one. Oh, what is this one? Revive the Military Affairs Commission. Oh, get more political power and army speed. We gotta do this one first. An army without leadership is a mob. And as the National Revolutionary Army spreads its wings, it needs more now than ever capable men capable men at its home. Modern military organization means that no person could ever lead a campaign alone. A council staff, experts, and commanders are needed. The army, however, is haunted by the ghosts of its past as a result who ought to sit on the revived Mac. Or the MAC. So we lost there. Which gives us justification for us to want to go to war with these guys. Right? Right. That's what I thought. Oh! Nice. That's cool too. Awesome. You now click to run them. Oh god. How are we doing over here? What else? Can they actually win there? No. Alright. Can you actually win there? No. Okay. Good to know. Huh. CRS. Oh, there. We need this guy. He's not very good. I don't want him. Oh, this is pretty good. Lin Biao? Yeah, that'd be really good, actually. More of a tree attack defense. We have to do that in just a little bit too. Oh, hello. You guys are actually doing really well now. What the heck is going on? Uh, there you go. Here. Oh, okay. Never mind. You did. You did well. Okay. You don't need us. Chilean Argentinian war, all right. Gathering opposition. We should follow Dr. Sun's principles. What we need now is action and the people to take action. Announced Song Jingling at the creation of the Provincial Action Committee. Let's go right there. Um, a development of earlier populist Mingong government, the PAC devoted the cause of establishing a socialist and free China. A one void of, uh, devoid of imperialism, warlords, and greedy landlords. To the PAC, the Chinese revolution is a complex with the revolutionary characteristics of a military uh, uh, rebellion, the of civil rights, democracy, and of socialism. Members of the PAC adhere to the Marxist ideas of historical materialism. They're convinced that China is headed towards the socialist future and the common people, Pingmen, will assume leadership in the new order. The society of the future will be built on the active participation of the masses of the common people. Due to the complex nature of the PAC's beliefs, they maintain a shaky relationship with the construction of faction, the Royal Society, the Chinese Syndicalist Party, and even members of the Wang Jingwei's Reorganized Comrades Association. While PAC members agree with the Reconstruction faction on the nature of eventual democracy, to them the RF is nothing more than a representation of bourgeois interests which will tarnish the actual revolution that is to be led by the Chinese commoners. Those, they, they see those in the RCA as a mere lackeys to an authoritarian chairman. Will indeed hold similar grassroots and socialist views as the syndicalist and anarchist counterparts more conservative PAC members have reservations regarding the Third International's role in the World Revolution. Now by the dynamic Deng Yang Da, uh, charismatic widow, Madame Song Qingling, the PAC does not advocate orthodox Sunism, but rather improvement and development of the three principles of the people to make them more concrete and practical to meet the needs of the people. Their intellectual flexibility is what allows them to court these various factions, from syndicalists to liberals, while maintaining their own goal of a democratic and socialist China. 
focus on the peasants' agrarian elements. Focus on broad democratic element. Focus on the militaristic revolutionary element. Oh, yeah. Revolutionary thought. Within the reorganized Commerce Association, few can hardly dispute that the clique's primary ideological stance is guided by none other than Chen Gongbo, a dynamic revolutionary socialist who studied economics at Columbia University from 1922 to 24. Associated with syndicals early on in his political career and a founding member of the Chinese Syndicalist Party, Chen developed a passionate interest in Marxism while overseas, intellectually. He describes himself as believing in historicism, a common euphemism for Marxist materialism. Like all orthodox Marxists, Chen holds that politics and institutions are merely the reflections of economic structures. A frequent publisher in the Revolutionary Critic, Chen has published uh, his magnum opus, Revolutionary Thought. In this work, he coined the expression dynamic materialism to describe his Weltanschungung, worldview holding that matter and motion are the basic constituents of the world. In concluding passages of his work, Chen notes that he had originally found fault with Marx's writings that capitalism would lead to his destruction. After all, he pointed out that although the Great War, Germany survived and sustained itself, Exploring the colonies, strengthening, strengthening capitalism, an idea never anticipated by Marx. However, with the recent collapse of the German economy following Black Monday, Chen writes that for China to be free, she must pursue her own independent revolutionary direction, and the KMT party organ must be reorganized to perf perfection to execute such anti-imperialism. With the demise of capitalism worldwide, Chen muses, there is finally a chance for the national revolution to succeed. A brilliant writer, that Chen Bo, Chen Gongbo. And if we can, with the few factories we have, we'll buy some uh, stuff here too. Because we're going to need all this stuff here eventually. We have no convoys, but we're going to start buying guns and trucks and stuff because we're going to start converting our guys over a little bit too. Uh, which one do I hate more? These guys or these guys? I really hate these guys. But we really don't like these guys. I don't want to support either side, really. These guys are actually doing okay. We can send two divisions this time, huh? There you go. Oh, well, okay. There you go. There you go. I can do that too. Anything else we can do here we really care about? Army reform, we're slowly going to get there. Slowly, 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 slowly. Not bad. Nice. Good. Eyes in the dark. Yeah. We're gonna deal with the warlords next. I'm gonna deal with eyes in the dark probably. RCA, RCA, PSE, RCA. Council Communists, huh? Nice. Just hold the line as best you can. That's all that really matters. The Military Affairs Commission. The Military Affairs Commission was originally found in Guangzhou as a means of overseeing, supervising, and managing the National Revolutionary Army in its infancy. Originally with the 64 members, Dr. Sun Yat-sen reduced it to 26, and by the time he died, it was reduced to a board consisting of Wang Jingwei, Zhu Chongzi, Liao Zhongkai, Hu Hanmin, Tan Yangkai, Chiang Kai-shek, Mikhail Borodin, and Wu Chao Shu. In the ensuing year or so, Cheng Qiang, Li Zhishen, Cheng Gongbu joined the staff along with allied warlords Zi, Li Zongren, Huang Chao Hong, Feng Zhu Xiang, Li Fulin, and Gu Yingfeng. The infighting among the Mac did a little favors during the Northern Expedition. As Jiang attempted to strong arm Wang into yielding the chairmanship to him, charging Wang with incompetence in military affairs, most of its old membership have since long gone too. Uh, ten in the warlords left, Hu and Ji were executed, of course. Uh, Borrowed didn't recall and replaced by Malro, Chiang was killed in his expedition, of course. Having uh, recently been restored to cooperate or coordinate the new National Revolution Army's activities, many fear a repeat of previous battles over control of the MAC. The military brass blame interference from civilians and outsiders for its old failures, demanding only the president and senior commanders be appointed. This has been uh, contested by those who believe the NRA must be held accountable, denouncing the independent streak chain encouraged, and insist on further civilian oversight by the Central Committee or Central Executive Committee. The United Front, with the backing of the MMIC, has instituted or insisted on a fair say, complicating matters even more, insisting on the LCS and advisors' presence on the commission. The situation. 
on the ground demands, however, a decision be made quickly about the size and makeup of this body. This military ought to handle military matters. Oh, Camp T C C civilian oversight only. Broad scope of opinions is always uh, always useful. There you go. There you go. You can be Mr. Horses. MMIC, LCS, yeah. Happy nineteen thirty seven, everybody. Extraction planes. I mean I wouldn't mind planes. It's better already immediately first though. Dispersed industry is not bad. Grab that. Can you actually win here? Maybe on historical materialism. Describes the second most prominent intellectual within the Reorganized Comrades Association, and the de facto leader of the RCA moderates, Gu Meng Yu was never a Marxist oriented intellectual like his radical peers in the RCA. Prior to joining the Kuomintang Army or KMT in early 25, Gu was a registrar and head of the economics department of Peking University. While he holds a good understanding of Marxism, he does not subscribe to materialism, nor does he think that economic structures were the primary factor in understanding history. In his new work on historical materialism, he disputes the validity of dialectical and historical materialism, earning harsh criticism and woeful boos from the radical faction of the RCA. Gu writes that evidence presented by unlocking the logic of nature was just a form of metaphysics since it is not based on empirical grounds, as to historical ma materialism. Gu did not think that economic structures were the ultimate determinant for superstructure. He argues that human knowledge, science, education, and ethics play just as important a role in economic development. Denouncing Orthodox Marxism as a religious doctrine, Gu's writings have earned acclaim from non marxists within the KMT and those in the RCA who do not subscribe to the ideals of materialism. Despite praise from his camp, sales for honest historical materialism has nonetheless shown, fallen short compared to the popularity of Chen Gong Bu's work. Gu makes an excellent point. Uh, we gotta do that one, but we'll do Eyes in the Dark next. We're only 64%. Oh. Good job, son. You've learned nothing, but good job, anyways. Still buying more trucks, huh? We need more guns. We need more arty. What? Guangzhou government. Sichuan. Oh god, they're fighting two people at once. This is why we need to go to war fast. Oh, political advisors? Well, like we saw earlier, there's no one we can really get that would really help us out. Yeah. I don't want to strengthen anybody but ourselves. Spear. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that guy though. Seems pretty good. Oh, we were defeated. There you go. Puerto Rico declares independence. That's fine. Whatever. We're gonna deal with the warlords. I think it's time. Oh, you definitely can't win there. Oh, there goes Collins. Goodbye, Collins. Oh, that's not good. Union of Britain, huh? The fate of the League officers. The National Revolution is in full swing with the, the revolutionary move. Harnessing the power of the mass movement is ever vital if we're going to win this time around. Um, <clears throat> and figuring out how to do so remains fresh in the minds of the leading voices in the government. Dong Bi Wu, perhaps the most famous uh, dual KMT CSB membership holder, regularly speaks on regulations and punishing local despots. Ping Ling, Ling Ping, another radical, speaks of giving farmers their own guard and the power to suppress counter revolutionaries on their own initiative. These radical CSB aligned voices are often supported by members of the military mi Mission Militaire International in China, notably M. N. Roy, who argues for a radical agrarian uprising to advance a revolutionary cause. And in general, the radicals in the CSP and even some of the orthodox factions see their duty to bring the ideas of class struggle from the proletariat and cities to the rural countryside. Not everyone, however, agrees. 
On the other end of the revolutionary spectrum, there are plenty of those who emphasize the nationalist element of the revolution at the expense of the socialist dimension. I often find their voice in the Reconstruction faction, who argue that this is not the time to make enemies and that there are plenty of honorable league authorities who are simply misguided in their initial alignment. They wish to offer broad amnesty for reforms, reactionaries, and for the party to moderate the language is simply measured reforms. We'll sweep away the old order. We get more worse for it. or this one. Hmm. Radicalism will decrease, so we can't do that one. Thoughts on March 8th. Despite her bourgeois background and his daughter of the gentry family, Ding Ling, born Zhang Bingzi, uh, stated the progressive Hunan Provincial No. 1 Normal School for Girls, where she became classmates with her future uh, revolutionary comrade, Zhang Jingyu. Inspired by her mother, from an early start, Ding Ling found her calling in the politics of the National and Social Revolution. Involved in left wing circles and acqu acquainted with figures such as Ku Qi Bai and her future husband Hu Le Pin, Yi Pin, Ding nevertheless maintained her own feminist stance by even initially turning down Hu's marriage proposals as a way to demonstrate her own free will, associated with the so called New Women's Mo Movement in literature. Her book, Miss Sophia's Diary, caused a sensation within the Chinese literary world for its provocative nature of sexuality and emotional desires. Despite her presence in Shanghai, Ding Ling herself traveled to Mingan to certain zone to observe the status and role of women in the National Revolution. Following her journey, she has recently published her magnum opus, Thoughts on March 8th, regarding women in the Mingang Zone. Prefacing uh, her essay by emphasizing that women in the Mingang Zone hold better lives than women of other provinces of China. Um, women in the Mingang Zone have yet to achieve total liberation from the presupposed beliefs that they must bear children and be a marriage. As a self-declared cynicalist, she covers controversial topics such as right to remain unmarried, the right to divorce, and the right to abortion. She then describes how women can improve their mental and physical well-being as a means of feminist empowerment before describing that women must not wait to be saved, but must take it upon themselves to achieve revolution. Even that means that going against the KMT and other revolutionary parties. While claimed by feminists, Ding Ling's work has undoubtedly aroused irritation and criticism from more conservative elements of the revolution. The women's revolution is finally coming. And we're still losing. Uh, can we not reinforce? We cannot. Dang it. Okay. Understood. Come on. Uh, the CSP radicals ascendant. The Chinese Syndicalist Party, under the leadership of Chen Duzhu and Liu Lizan, have often been content playing a junior submissive role within the United Front. This will no longer be the case, at least so, so Chen Xiaoyu and other radicals such as Qian Bangqian and Qiu Ku Bai insist. Consisting of many younger cynicalist activists and intellectuals, they shaped under the compromising leadership of the CSP Orthodox faction, far more cynical than the Orthodox faction of them. The chaos in China is not merely a product of imperialism or warlordism, but capitalism itself. Imperialism, business landlords, uh, the gentry and capitalism must be destroyed uh, thoroughly and immediately, and there is little room for compromise even within the now defunct League of Chinese Cynicalists. This radicalism resulted in many gravitating towards the RCA, particularly Chen Gongbo's wing, seeing them as natural allies in implementing cynicalism in both the cities and the countryside. In practice, however, that the KMT justly guarding the control of our lion unions and international military missions supporting the political department over them, seeing them as a more fruitful investment, they struggle for relevance. It's not, however, accept them of any zeal, nor has it made them any, many friends among the moderates within them in the KMT. The CSB radicalizes. Nice. Demand Guangzhou's submission. Regional authorities in Guangzhou find themselves adrift as of late. Swearing allegiance to nobody but themselves, as China is truly legitimate government, we must bring them into the fold whether they accept or we will prepare other less courteous matters. Guangzhou government. And demand Yunnan clique submission. China's natural revolution. Negotiate with the Federalists. As we prepare ourselves for a second northern expedition, we must remember our true enemy, the powerful northern warlords who betrayed Dr. Sun at the end of the original Xinhai Revolution. We cannot afford to be distracted by our rivals in the south, most notably the Federalists, whom we have grown bitterly divided at from ever since Chen Zhang Ming's rebellion against the eternal premier. Look okay, at what they deserve in due time, for now Chen and Wang has ordered secret negotiations between the intermediaries for a potential pact to prevent fighting between Republican forces. Hmm. 65 only, huh? Well, let's come back up here. We could. We don't have to. We're at 70%. That's not bad. Demand Guangzhou's submission. Should they choose or refuse? They will die. They literally have no divisions on the border. So that would be a very, 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 very incredibly poor choice. Fall Denver. Oh boy. Goodbye, Denver. Anarchists are slowly maybe getting more. No? Well, come on back then.
They should, uh, probably shouldn't lose their eyes in the dark. Complete the revolutionary mission. Uh, we're going to do that one too. Dare to die, core, renovate the Jingling Arsenal. The Jingling Arsenal, built by the Qing Dynasty in 1865, was one of China's first modern arsenals. The design helped design, produce ordnance, and other more heavy weaponry. Left behind a waste by the Zi League warlords and abandoned during the chaotic fighting of the League War, let us seek to renovate the former arsenal and turn it into the armory of the revolution. I want to see what they say first towards us. Nice job, guys. You learn nothing, so you're just going to come by with them. It's fine. Ah, the Wangzu government refuses to yield. Despite our efforts to settle the matter peacefully, Chen Zhongming has formally renounced our efforts of promoting national unity and began mobilizing Liang Guang units in a show of force to try to ward us off. He has ejected all of our representatives and denounced our government as illegitimate, spreading such vile th lies throughout Guangzhou. Naturally, his actions are a grave insult, but our best course of action remains to be seen. Given the stubborn and fickle nature of warlords, rejection was always in the cards, but enforcing a will on the Guangzhou government will require allocating forces which may be spent elsewhere. Timing, as always, is everything. Let's begin to build up by the border. Evasion begins now. Yeah. The Datong and Social Slot. Uh, we need you in. Yeah, there we go. The German notion. Uh, the Da Tong can be traced back to the Liji Book of Rights, where it denotes a world of harmony and universal welfare based on the unselfish behavior of all members of society. Um, throughout the centuries of Chinese civilization, this idea of Da Tong was revived, and by the late 19th century, it was beginning to be incorporated into the concepts of Chinese revolutionaries and reformers, of course. As a common term in anarchist, socialist, and even Marxist texts, Dai Tong has been used to describe a future social society. The Marxist writer, and cynical as Guo Moru's essay, Marx Enters the Confucian Temple, imagines an encounter between Confucius and Marx where the philosophers agree that their ideas are compatible. A term popular among the Provincial Action Committee, who cite Dr. Sun's usage of Dao Tong in the party's anthem, the term is also popular among the party's anarchist elders in the world society, according to Li Shizhen. The history moves in revolutions, with the first revolution being a monarchical revolution, the revolution for the people's sovereignty, and the revolution for class, and the final revolution for the Dao Tong. Of these revolutions, the establishment of the archaic Sheng and Zhu dynasties fit the first revolution. The American, French, and Xinhai revolutions were of uh, the second type. The syndicalist revolutions of France and Britain were the third type, and their final revolution is to come. The revolution advocated by the Prothong, which carries out the ideals of Min Cheng according to Dr. Sen. To the Chinese syndicalist party, while the Datong represents an ideal society without current ills, it is also inspired by the coming of France, the first state to put socialism into practice. Generally speaking, these writers converge on a vision of an industrialized China based on the masses, guided by the workers' unions, with the social and cultural facilities available to all. In this world, there should be economic planning, industrialization, agriculture, and collectivization, the socialization of property, social infrastructure, the rights and duties for all to work, and political equal statuses. The French method will inspire cities across China, luscious and green neighborhoods, garden cities, that the ideal utopia for a truly cynical China. A wonderful world awaits us in the heartland of fury. With the came to the ultimate of having come and gone, the looming war of the Guangzhou government has led to a surge in national wrath against the Chen Zhongming and his public interest party. Uh, rage echoes across the halls of power in Nanjing, as radicals have seized the moment uh, to, uh, to clamor for revenge against the reactionaries. <clears throat> Only for the historic crimes against the Kuomintang, but for their ongoing oppression by the people. This has led to the side effect of weakening the opposition of this establishment, however, uh, muted but still present, questions about why Chen Zhongming does not sufficiently fear the party state, and why harsher measures that have not already been taken against him have entered the common political discourse, of course. Um, <clears throat> odds are, as battlefield successes trickle in, these voices will fade in the background, um, but that's not to say they will ever go away. We need to move in here now. A wave of anger watches over the party. Radicalism in the party will increase by a large amount. Influence will increase or rise. Failure of talks will violate, validate the views of socialist hardliners. Don't play this historical sentence. There you go. How much more do we need? The fighting stage one, that's alright. I'm going to go and cancel this stuff now. It's fine. And probably the last thing we'll read before we finish off this episode. While the revolution may have initially been successful with the recent victories of the NRA during the League War, to many within the party, there are still plenty of imperialist warlords and dissenters, counter-revolutionaries, and reactionaries that still lurk even among the party itself. As such, a general committee has come together in a brief emergency meeting to determine the future of the party's internal ap uh, security apparatus. 
Encouraged by the Reorganized Comrades Association, the political department under the distinguished General Zhu and Lai proposed the creation of the Special Service Section of the Central Committee. Uh, along with the chief lieutenants Gu Xunzeng, Zhang Zhongfa, and Zhang Yanghui, the Teke professes to enforce the party's socialist base orthodoxy while promising efficiency to root out local resistance. Nicknamed the Red Squad, the organization's members are mostly localized in the location cities, with connections ranging from syndicalist unions to gangsters. Meanwhile, members of the National Revolutionary Army have been eagerly pushed. Uh, utilizing Dai Chongfeng's Feng's established network across the Shanghai underground to create the National Bureau of Investigation and Statistics Zhongtong. An outgrowth of underground clandestine activities with extensive connections to the criminal activity in the nationalistic gangs, the Zhongtong is known to have some fraternal semi esoteric behavior, with their own shadowy League of Ten, whom profess nothing but absolute loyalty to the Laoban, Dai Chongfeng. As a compromise, party members have instead suggested merging both plan organizations to create a unified Ministry of State Security. Increasingly worried about the, by the growing factionalism within the Kuomintang, the spell will place the leadership of state security under Dai Chongfeng while granting considerable power to Zhu and the political department is handling internal affairs. A power of Zhu and Lai's tech. Great intelligence agency, not bad. Operative slots plus two. Fun Dai Chongfeng's BIS. Combined both into MSS. Increased by a small amount. Um, uh, Operative Hostel gets two. That's a good compromise, but we're not going to compromise here. Bureau of Investigation and Statistics. Nice. We're going to do that one too. Dare to Die Corps. Um, we probably could use that one too. The traditions of heroic martyrdom dates back to the years before the Xinhai Revolution, when revolutionary martyrs charged forward in a battle that a care for their life but filled with devotion to the country. Now we find ourselves in pursuit of the revolutionary mission. We must encourage those within our forces to be prepared to give the ultimate sacrifice necessary. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we're going to try to beat the crap out of the Guangzhou government as well as Sichuan. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.